Alright, it's March 11th. This is my current motor test setup. I've got a three foot uh, quarter inch all thread. Um, it's the same motor as in my first video, except that it's been trimmed down a little bit. Uh, easier to assemble, disassemble. And then I've added on the encoder that has a spinning uh, rotor here that has a magnet in one end. I don't know if you can see that, it's uh, hot glued in there. And it just has a counterweight on the other that I can adjust in and out to balance it. And things are fairly well balanced right now. Uh, it's just attached to a single motor that is plugged into a 3 volt power supply. Um, it currently spins at 3 volts at about 60 cycles um, with this weight and everything on it. It fans quite a bit of wind. Then at the other end, I've also added this uh, coil, or this rotor on the other end of the motor. As you can see, there's a coil here, which is wired to this second coil. Um, so that when the, the rotor passes by it, then it, it induces a current through the, the bolt that's in the center of it. And then that, in turn, um, induces a current in the shaft, the main shaft of the motor, and then can be picked up by this one, which is stationary around the shaft. It doesn't move. And so that's one of my pickup coils. Uh, I didn't, as I was um, winding them, really pay attention. I should have so, um, to the number of turns. And so I'm not getting a real strong signal out of it, but I'm, I'm just compensating with the circuit because this is just a prototype anyway. On the other side, I have another bolt that is uh, through another coil, and it's stationary, obviously, mounted through the, the the test stand. And so it is also picking up a signal on the back side of the magnets. And as you can see, there's a pretty good gap here. Um, if I squeeze these together, I'll show you that on the oscilloscope, uh, you get an increase in the the size of the signal off of this rotor. And this one is plenty large. It's it's close enough to the magnet. It's not, I'm not having a problem. Well, it's just one coil. It doesn't jump through coil to coil to coil to get the output signal. In my breadboard, I'm using an op amp <coughs> to uh, amplify uh, the signal. Well, really, it's just being used as a comparator. It uh, it, it just sharpens the, the the edge and gives me a square wave out. And so, if I fire this up now, in my very high tech switch here, paper clip, <coughs> you can see that my motor is now spinning, and it's in it's creating a wave on the oscilloscope. Um, so I can't, oh, my power supply is not on, so I'll turn that on. It's at three volts, which is what. I expect the microcontroller to be working out, and so my pull-up resistors and everything will be, a, I'm simulating that to be the same. As you can see here, I've got uh, the yellow wave is what's coming off of the magnet, magnetic coil, and then the, the blue square wave is what's coming off of the op-amp. And you can see my threshold right here, I've create, used a voltage divider to, to make it trigger. I figured I figured that it was best, rather than to trigger off of this slope, which could probably vary quite a bit and isn't necessarily as steep, that this was the fastest moving slope, and so I wanted to trigger here. And so I'm, that's the way I wire it. And so now I'm going to move my test lead um, so that now we're looking at both outputs. If I adjust Hopefully I did that right. And then, what am I looking at here? Should be getting my two... Uh, if all else fails, let it... Or uh, let it uh, find the signal itself, right? <coughs> don't want to take the time to troubleshoot it. Okay, so there's my two signals. Um, if 
I move it down here, I amplify them a little bit so you can see them better. So the yellow signal is now attached to the rotor on the motor and the blue is the stationary signal. So now if I move my rotor, then you'll see as I'm moving it that my, alright let me stabilize this threshold here. It's not jumping all over. The two important edges here are the leading edge of the yellow and of the blue. And you can see that they are fairly well fixed. As I'm moving my motor rotor, you see that they, they the blue one is sliding here. That's just because I'm triggering off the yellow. But uh, that gives me a relative position. If I take a timing, if I time how long it is between these two signals, then I can figure out the position of the rotor. And since one of them is stationary, then I know where the, the variable position one is. So that's the current state of it. Um, I'm getting ready to feed this into the microcontroller and then to start uh, controlling the motor from there.